Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and first of all I just want to say a happy new year to absolutely everybody that watches these videos. 2021 was a fantastic year, I managed to create lots of videos and had lots of positive feedback, people beating their highest breaks, doing well in practice exercises, beating their highest break in a frame, so it's all been fantastic. Lots more planned for 2022, so happy new year to everybody that's watching. Now in this video we're going to explore the backswing, so I've talked before in previous videos about having a long backswing on certain shots where we need to generate a bit more spin on the cue ball or a bit more power. So we're going to explore what that actually means for your own cue action and some of the things to bear in mind when you're talking about pulling the cue back all the way to the V and having that long backswing. Now I've talked before on the channel about using a long backswing when we're trying to generate more power and possibly when we're trying to generate more spin on the white ball. Now the reason that longer backswing is important is because if you're trying to generate lots of power or get this white ball spinning so maybe you want to generate a lot of screw back, you're going to need to pull the cue back further so you've got enough time to build the speed of the cue up smoothly. For players that only use a small backswing on these type of shots, it's very easy to try and do a quick burst of acceleration, get the cue up to speed very quickly, and that can easily throw the cue offline, and you don't actually have as much control as you would think. Now, some of the things you sometimes get when you tell people to use a longer backswing is, you know, it feels like they're suddenly extending their arm and it's miles out of control and they just feel very uncomfortable. That's a very short-term thing, so if you practice bringing the cue all the way back to the V, you will soon get used to what it feels like and actually start to realise that you actually do get a little bit of extra control and it's better than trying to restrict it and bring it back a shorter amount. Now something incredibly important that I keep talking to players about when I'm doing my one-to-one -one coaching sessions on the table, it's really important to remember that having a backswing where you pull the cue all the way back to the thumb, just like someone like Ronnie O'Sullivan does, it depends on how far your hand is actually starting from the cue ball to begin with. So if we look at someone like Judd Trump now, you'll see that Judd Trump's hand is very close to the cue ball to begin with. So if Judd pulls the cue all the way back to his V on a shot where he might be splitting the pack or generating some power, that means he's actually only pulled the cue back about 7 inches, let's say, for example. Whereas if we look at someone like Luca Brussel, he's got a very long bridge length. If he were to bring the cue all the way back to his V, he's actually ended up bringing the cue, pulling the cue back about 12 inches or 13 inches. So even though they're doing technically the same thing, they're pulling the cue all the way back to the V, the thing that you have to bear in mind is it's very important for you to realise it depends how far your hand personally is from the cue ball. So if you're someone that likes to have a slightly longer bridge, I've talked about this in previous videos, bridge length anywhere from about 9 inches, that's on the very short end, to about 13 inches is the absolute maximum. You don't really want to be going any longer than that away from the cue ball. So if you're somebody that has that 9-inch bridge length, then on those power shots, you probably do want to be bringing the cue all the way back to the V, and then you can push the cue forward and you'll manage to generate that lovely smooth acceleration and smooth timing. If you're somebody that has the bridge length at about 12 or 13 inches, so you're at the longer end of normal, and that's very individual because it affects your sighting. You can't suddenly tell someone who's got a very long bridge to go really close to the white because all of a sudden they feel like they're right on top of the shot. It changes the perspective and the feel that they've got looking at the white ball and the object ball. So if you're that player that likes to use that longer bridge and that's how you play and you've got used to that, then for you, possibly just bringing the cue back to about where the fingertips are, that will be absolutely fine. And that means you've brought the cue back exactly the same amount of distance as somebody that's got their hand closer to the white, but you're still giving yourself a nice runway to build up the speed of the cue. So just something I wanted to address, it's very important to bear in mind how far that hand is away from the cue ball. Know what you're doing with your own action, and then you can adjust your final, your final backswing, that final pullback you do before you strike, you can adjust it and get it perfect for your own technique. Right, so now we're going to look at some shots where this long backswing is very beneficial. So this is a common shot here. I'm on the blue. I want to go into this pack of reds here. So I'm trying to make the white hit the pink, split these reds open and hopefully land on a red. Now this is where this longer backswing is really important because it means that I've got plenty of time to smoothly get the cue up to speed and that's going to help to keep my body even more steady and nice and still on this shot. If I only use a small backswing, 
I've got to generate the speed of the queue quickly and then that's going to cause unwanted body movement. So I'm going to find my line like I always talk about in other videos, walk into the shot here, get my bridge at the correct distance for me, do some feathers up to make sure everything looks good and then pull my cue all the way back to the V and play the shot going full ball into that pink there. So by using that longer backswing, that helps me to stay a bit stiller on the shot. Then once I know the blue's gone in, you can look up, look at these reds here, and actually it's not too bad. I've got a red that I can pop to the corner there and hopefully run the white round the corner and onto the black. Now another key example here is splitting this pack of reds from the black here. So we often find that we've potted the two or three loose reds, we might be on a little break of 16, we want to now go into this pack and try and bring a few more reds out into open play. Now these shots, just like that blue shot, they're always shots where however hard you're going to hit it, just think about hitting it just a little bit softer. You, you never quite need as much power as people think. You see a lot of people, when they're playing in the clubs, they think that, okay, I'm going into the pack from the black, I've got to hit it absolutely maximum full speed. That's not the case. You always want to think to yourself, okay, just however hard I'm going to hit it, just back off just a little bit. Another example, though, of needing a nice long backswing. So I'm going to try and screw into this pack of reds here. So I'm aiming low on the white. So I'm doing my feathers up. And then again, I'm going to use this nice long backswing to my V. And then do my nice smooth acceleration. And actually, again, there, I'm nice and happy. I've landed good on this red here to the corner. Now I've got another couple of reds out in open play. This red in the middle of the pack pots here. As you move all the reds, it then frees other ones and makes those available. But the really important thing is use that backswing again so that you can remain nice and still on the shot. It helps the stillness, helps you get the cue up to speed without losing control because you're trying to keep the cue in as straight a line as possible. So that's why that long backswing helps. And then hopefully you get a nice result like this and you can continue your break. Now, another great example here of where you'll need to use a longer backswing to generate the spin a little bit more effortlessly. So I finish now almost straight on this black. I've got a tiny, tiny angle. So what I'd love to be able to do is screw the white back off this cushion and then bring it back out into open play. So I've got a shot on both of these reds into this corner. Now this is again where if you don't use a long backswing, you'll struggle to generate as much spin as you want on the cue ball. And you'll probably find that you'll hit this cushion but just not come out far enough. Now, just remember that these shots still require good timing. So by that again, we mean that the cue is going at its maximum speed right as you catch the white ball. And you almost feel like you're pushing the white for a second. You don't want to jab at the shot and pull away. You want to push through the white ball to really get that spin on. But this is a great example of where you will need that lovely backswing again. So put some chalk on the cue to make sure you don't miss cue. Walk into your shot as normal. Do your feathers up to the shot. Obviously, I might have to move out the way a bit of this shot. Nice long backswing again. And then didn't have to move that time, actually, because the white was not coming back at me there. And again, I've left myself here. This is a rest shot, but I've got both reds available to me, and I've got right back into this area. But actually, it was a good example there. I'm actually slightly overscrewed that shot and still I didn't feel like I hit that that hard it felt like about a six or a seven out of ten in terms of power I could have hit that harder but I've managed to generate that spin while by using that lovely long smooth backswing keeping your body nice and still and generating the spin effortlessly now this last shot is definitely a bit more of a fun exhibition shot so I'm on the final colour here and I need to get to the yellow to try and complete my colours clearance. Now I could probably play the blue here and just play a little stun over, leaving the yellow into its own pocket. But just for a bit of fun, I'm going to play the pink and try and bring the white round off. One, two, then bring it up here, three cushions, four cushions and in between the yellow and brown. So I'm definitely going to need a long backswing here to get this right. So I have to reach round to get to the potting line here and then a bit of left hand side, a bit of stun long backswing right through the shot and then hopefully if we got enough power here so just about maybe and that should come round leaving a nice shot onto the yellow so that one just a bit of fun there but if you could get a shot like that right it does look very impressive so hopefully there are some good tips for why you need to use a long backswing on lots of shots because it really helps you to keep nice and still generate the spin you need on the white and smoothly get the cue up to speed without any of that unwanted body movement coming into the shot.
So as always, everybody, I really hope you found this video useful and I hope that's cleared up some of those things about the backswing length there and how the distance that your hand actually starts from the white has a big impact on what is actually a full backswing and how far is a player actually bringing that cue back. So as always, if you did enjoy it, remember to like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. That really helps me to keep all this content coming. Again, Happy New Year to all everybody that watches these videos. I hope everybody has a fantastic 2022 and sets themselves some nice little goals with their snooker and continues to improve. If anyone's interested in any personal one-to-one -one coaching sessions on the table, have a look in the description box below, visit my website, get in touch, and I'd love to help you personally with your game. And as always, thanks for watching. Cheers. See if I can finish off this little colours clearance now.